Okay, so in this example, we're being asked to find the equation of the polynomial given the zeros. So notice here that our zeros, we have real zeros, and we also have a complex zero. Now be careful with this zero right here, because let's go back to the square root of negative one. We know that the square root of negative one is i, right? So we do have an imaginary part here, and this comes from the square root of a negative number. So if we're talking about square root, it has to be plus or minus. Okay, so not only do we have this complex zero, but we're also going to have the following complex zero, which is this. We have x equals 2 minus 2i. Okay, again, I'm going to include both the plus and the minus. So just be careful with that part. Okay, so in total, we have two real zeros and two complex zeros. So now we want to find the polynomial that has these zeros. So let's erase this. Now, we're simply just going to go in reverse. So we want to put this back into its factored form. So just going left to right, we're going to have x minus 2, and then we have x minus 3, okay, then we have x minus, and then in parentheses, 2 plus 2i, and then we have x minus, and then in parentheses, 2 minus 2i, okay, and this would all be equal to 0. So at this point, if you were solving for the zeros, you would take each one of your factors, right, set it equal to 0, and solve, and hence, this is where the zeros come from. But again, we're going to reverse, so what we want to do at this point is expand this out. Now, let's work on these first two factors right here first, and then we'll work on these, all right? So just in the first two factors, we're going to use FOIL. So in the first outside, inside, last, we get x squared, all right, minus 3x, minus 2x, and then plus 6. We have like terms here and here that we can combine, so we get x squared, minus 5x plus 6, okay? So let's just leave this right here, because now we have to expand out this part. And this one's a little bit more challenging. All right, but let's just go ahead and do it. So again, look at this negative sign. We want to go ahead and distribute that to each of our terms. Same thing here. So we're just going to rewrite this the following way. We have x minus 2 minus 2i, okay? And then we're going to have x minus 2 plus 2i, Again, two negatives make a positive. All right, and that's it. So what we want to do now is simply just multiply this out. So we're going to start with our first term and just multiply it to all of my other terms. Or your second term, multiply that with all my other terms, right? And then your third term and do the same thing. All right, so let's just start with the first term. We're going to do x times x. We get x squared. I'm just going to write it right here. So x squared. Then we get x times a negative 2. That's negative 2x. Then we get x times a 2i, so plus 2ix. All right, let's move on to the second term. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 2, that's positive 4. And then negative 2 times a 2i, that's a negative 4i. Okay, let's move on to our last term. Negative 2i times x, negative 2ix. Negative 2i times a negative 2, that's positive 4i. And then a negative 2i times a positive 2i, that's going to be negative 4i squared. Alright, so at this point we want to go ahead and just combine any like terms that we have but before we do that we may be able to cancel out some terms so just looking here it looks like I have a positive 2ix and a negative 2ix that will cancel out here I have a negative 4i and a positive 4i that cancels out and at this point I can go ahead and just combine any like terms that I may have so just doing this out I get x squared okay we're done with this can't combine that with anything Negative 2x and a negative 2x, that's negative 4x. Okay, so we're done. Then I have positive 4, and then negative 4i squared. Okay. Now remember what i squared is. i squared is negative 1, because remember, you know that the square root of negative 1 is i, so if we square both sides, negative 1 is equal to i squared. So wherever I see an i squared, I'm going to replace it with a negative 1, all right? So here's an i squared. We can do this in our head. 
negative 1 times a negative 4 is positive 4, and then plus 4 is 8. So we get x squared minus 4x, and then plus 8. Okay? So, we're almost done. We're looking at this part now because we have to continue to expand this out right here and here. So let's go ahead and rewrite this, and then we'll expand it out. So we're just going to go ahead and erase this. We have room. Okay, we're going to erase this here. And let's write out what we have. We have x squared minus 5x plus 6. All right, so we're done with this. And then right here we have x squared minus 4x plus 8. Okay. So at this point, right, again, we're just going to start with our first term and go to each one of our terms, right, second term, right, and keep doing the same thing, all right? So let's start with our first term. So x squared times x squared, we'll write it right here, is x to the fourth. x squared times a negative 4x is negative 4x to the third, okay? x squared times an 8 is plus 8x squared, all right? Let's move on to the second term. Negative 5x times x squared is negative 5x to the third. Negative 5x times a negative 4x is positive 20x squared, right? And then just continuing on, we get negative 5x times an 8. That's going to be negative 40x, okay? Last term here, we get 6 times x squared. That's positive 6x squared, 6 times a negative 4x, that's going to be negative 24x, and then 6 times an 8, that's going to give us positive 48. Alright, so at this point, we just need to go ahead and combine any like terms that we may have. So just starting with x to the 4th, can't combine that with anything, so just rewriting, so x to the 4th. And if you want, you can go ahead and cross it out so you know you're done. All right, so we're done with this. Now looking at x cubed and x cubed, we can combine that. Negative 4x cubed and a negative 5x cubed, that's negative 9x cubed. So again, we can cross this out so we know we're done. Moving on to x squared, we do have a few of those here. So I'm looking right here, here, and here. So again, I have an 8x squared a 20x squared, and a 6x squared, that's going to be positive 34x squared. All right, so again, we can cross it out so we know that we're done. So we're done with this, this, and this. Okay, moving on to x. So I have that here and here. Just combining those, that's going to give me negative 64x. So negative 64x. Again, let's cross it out so we know we're done. And then we'll just have that constant left over right here, which is 48. All right, so plus 48. So plus 48. Okay, and this is now complete. So this is going to be the polynomial that has the following zeros. All right, and that is it.